In this video, I'm drawing an isometric dungeon map for my brand new TTRPG one-shot adventure. Let's do this. Every month on my Patreon, I make a new one-shot adventure or guidebook, sometimes even games. And this month, I've made a one-shot dungeon for players to explore in hopes of resurrecting a fallen comrade. It's a, a like a holy temple that's been taken over by a malicious spirit, so the players have to clear out the ghosts and take care of some bugs, and then hopefully they'll be able to resurrect their friend and keep the adventure going. So usually when I start writing a, a one-shot or any adventure really, I, I start with a really simple outline, usually in my sketchbook, and then I jump into Google Docs and start typing stuff out. I'll slowly build things up, get more detailed, until eventually I have the, the full adventure written. Each room of the dungeon is detailed out, all of the NPCs are explained, and magic items, everything's good to go, and that's where I am at this point of the process. Now before I do any layout or illustration, the first thing I like to do is draw the map of the dungeon. So in a very similar process to to the writing, I'm gonna start really simple with this Sharpie map. Based on all of the writing, I'm just sort of planning out where I think each of the dungeon rooms is gonna go and how they're gonna connect. I'm really not worried about how this thing looks. There's no illustration going on here. It's all just simple layout. Now I've decided that I really like the look of the isometric maps that I did in my Dragon Town zine. So I want this dungeon to, to kind of look the same as those maps. So now that I have the, the layout planned and a, a sort of visual reference of what this map is gonna look like in my head, you know, the, the style of the map, I'm ready to start drawing this thing. So I've printed out a, an isometric grid on just a plain old sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. I've made the grid really light, and I'm sure it's kind of hard to see in this footage. You know, it's just visible enough that I can see it to, to draw on top, but when I scan this map in later, it'll be really easy to make that grid disappear in Photoshop. Okay, so I'm starting off this drawing really slowly, just planning it in pencil, very similar to my Sharpie sketch. I'm just using the grid to get my rooms all planned out. I'm kind of just guessing the room size. I'm not being too strict about how big the rooms are in relation to each other. I kind of have an idea of what some of the bigger rooms are compared to the others, just based on my writing, but this map isn't a totally like, realistic, super representational map. It's more like a tool for exploring this location instead of like a, a realistic blueprint. Now the fun thing about this temple is that it has some verticality to it. There's actually three levels of this dungeon with this elevator that moves between the levels. And the thing I really have to nail about this layout is this temple has this star at the top of the spire and that star is the same height from the ground level as this pool in the basement on the third level down. The star at the top of the spire is like a, a beacon, you know, a, a signal telling people that they can come to this temple and get healed and, and be cured of any ailment or whatever. This is a temple to the goddess Valora, and kind of the secret of the temple is there's this pool deep underground that leads to the gloom tide. It's my version of the underworld. And there's a ritual that people can do to bring somebody back from the gloom tide. You know, pull them out of this pool deep underground. So I wanted this dungeon to have a sort of symmetry from this bright star at the top and then this dark pool down at the bottom. But of course the actual adventure isn't that simple. This temple has been closed up, it's been shut down, no visitors allowed because a bunch of these spirits have escaped the pool, escaped the gloom tide, and now are causing all these problems inside the temple. So anytime players go into a new room, the, the dungeon master is gonna roll on a random table and see which of these spirits is causing trouble in the room. The acolytes of the temple are these like little wombat people that are running around trying to put up wards, keeping these spirits from escaping. And there's also these big bug creatures called vermid that are digging tunnels and popping up and also causing trouble all over the place. I had a lot of fun writing up this adventure. I think there's a lot of chaos and, 
and crazy stuff happening inside this temple. And it's really fun getting to lay out this map and, and sketch it out and figure out how all of it connects. Now you can tell my pencils aren't too detailed. It's really just enough to be able to identify what function these rooms serve. You know, places like the infirmary and the underground garden. And I'm not being too precious about anything. If I need to, to change the drawing at all, I can just erase it and start over. Before I move on to the inking of this map, I just wanna let you know that in the next video, I'm gonna be doing a sort of recap of the year, looking forward to next year. And I also wanna answer a few of your questions. So if you have any questions about being a tabletop role-playing game designer, I guess that's what I am, an illustrator, a, a, a writer. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments and in the next video, I'll, I'll answer some of them. Okay, now that I'm confident with my pencil drawing, the dungeon's all laid out, all the details I need are added, everything's looking good, now it's time to ink this dungeon. So I'm gonna be using a size 10, a size 08, 05, and 03 micron to, to ink this drawing. I'll have links down in the description to where you can get all the tools that I'm using to draw this map. I'm starting with an outline of the rooms. The, the walls of this dungeon are getting the thickest line. And as you can tell, I've sort of changed up the, the tower, the spire of this temple. It's kind of the main feature. There's this cool furnace inside that, that people burn their prayers and it creates this light that shoots up to this beacon that, that shines out so everybody can see the spire from far and wide. I'm not quite sure that I, I nailed this tower, the look of it. So for the final zine, I might go back and, and redo it a little bit because this map kind of has a, a lot going on. So I'm, I'm really trying to differentiate the areas by using thick and thin lines. As I go, the more detail I add, the, the thinner the pin that I'm using will get. So the areas like the vermid tunnels, the, the, the bug tunnels that kind of weave in and out and go underneath and behind, I'm leaving a little bit of space in between those areas and the, the walls of the, the temple just to give the illustration some depth and make it as clear to read as possible. And speaking of depth, I'm adding these little hatch marks to the vermid tunnels just to make them look a little bit different than the floors of the temple. You know, make them look like they're, they're dug out by insects instead of nicely constructed marble floors. Now I've started adding in some of the details with the smaller pen and I'm not being too, too precious with these drawings. I'm not making sure everything is lined up just perfectly and everything's even. This map will actually get shrunken down a little bit when it's printed inside the zine, so the, these really small details are gonna get even smaller. You'll still be able to see exactly what they are, but any of the, the stray little wonky lines will kind of disappear when, when the drawing gets shrunken down. And I'm trying to make the coolest looking map possible, and I, I just think it's really important to add some of these details to, to bring the map to life. All I'm doing is illustrating a, a few of the things in the room, like the first things the, the players will see when they enter the room. So I'm not really giving anything away in the story, but I'm also making the map super useful for a dungeon master who, who's looking at it and trying to, trying to run this adventure from the map. Now you can probably tell some of the rooms have been left blank and that's because uh, there's secrets in those rooms. And if, if a DM wants to share the map with the players and let them explore, they totally can. And, and these secrets won't be given away by the map. Okay, now I'm moving on to the smallest pin, the, the O3 micron, and I'm using this to draw the, the grid lines. I guess this grid is probably equal to maybe 10 foot squares instead of the usual five foot squares, but I'm not being super exact about it. You know, some of the rooms on this map don't exactly line up with their descriptions. So like in the Acolyte quarters, I've only drawn six beds when there should be 13. I think the real purpose of this grid is not to make a, a sort of battle map. Instead, it's just really to help show the, the interior versus the exterior areas of this map. Everywhere there's a grid, the players can explore. 
However, I did decide to leave the grid out of the vermid tunnels with the hatching marks and the fact that the, the tunnels are only one square wide. I thought it would just look too busy, so I left it out. And this is the Valorum Temple. It's overrun with a bunch of restless spirits and crazy tunneling bugs, but it's ready for the adventurers to explore. Now that the map is done, it's time to scan it into the computer play around with it in Photoshop, and then put it into layout and InDesign. Right now, I think this adventure is gonna be called Flick Silver Pin's Guide to the Temple of the Waking Thread. That's kind of a mouthful. I'm not sure that's the title I'm gonna stick with, but this adventure is gonna be available at the end of this month digitally, and if you sign up in December for my Patreon at the, the Legend tier, once I get this zine back from the printers, I'll mail it out to all of the Legend tier patrons. I still have to do the layout and all of the character illustrations and stuff, but I'm, I'm really loving how this adventure is wrapping up. If all this sounds cool to you, definitely check out my Patreon. The link is down in the description. Let me know if you have any questions for me down in the comments, and maybe I'll answer them in the next video. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!